we're going to go through all the functions of this Hickox 6000 tube tester as part of a restoration that I'm doing. But in this portion of the restoration, every single possible function that we do with a, uh, a tube test is going to be accomplished here in this video. So let's get started. If you're wondering why the roll of paper with all the test functions are missing, this is part of a three-part series. This is number two. The first one was the restoration and repair of this unit. This is number two, which is the practical demonstration of this unit before calibration. And the next video will be the calibration of the unit and then a demonstration thereafter. I'll point out that as part of turn up and test, no calibration has been done yet. If you want to see the restoration video of this Hickox 6000, click the link above. I chose the 12AX7 for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, because they're a dime a dozen. I'm not going to use an $80 tube to see if the tube tester works because that would be silly. Another reason is, is because it, uh, it uses a lot of pins, has a high pin density, so it uses more of the internal connections. and also allows me to use more of the test configurations because it has two triodes on it, right? So uh, it's all around, for those reasons, a good choice for an inaugural run on this device. It also happens to be a tube that I use quite often in uh, guitar amplifiers, so not a rare one. I'm going to go out on a limb here before I start anything and say that the Static Zero should probably be here. Actually, I'm just going to set that. So I just want to point out that I have the values for the 12AX7 from the internet and that came off of the printout of the scroll. The first test that we're going to be doing is the power line adjust and this is the, uh, uh, we're going to turn on the power and we're going to have the meter move up on the scale, adjust control until the meter rests exactly on the mark, line test at the center of the meter scale. This establishes a standard voltage on the tube to be tested. Make sure final adjustments after the tube to be tested is placed in the socket, right? So that's all we're going to do right now. There's 120 in and about, right? And now I could take the line adjust and get this up to a line test, right? And we could see that meter move there. We could also see that all of the short lights are on. That's good because all that means all the neons are working. So the first test is a success. So I'm going to set the values. Filament. We'll go to... 12.6 and we're going to go to E V 7 this is 6 0 8 0 bias will be set at 12, shunt will be set at 58, function will be set at A, and this is the setting for the first side of the 12AX7. And as it sits idle right now, we're looking at about 300 milliamps of current sitting here, no tube in the socket. I'm going to introduce a tube, putting the tube in, we dropped, we, we went up to about 3.6, I mean this is not an, an enormous tube, right? Our line test did drop, right? I'm going to bring that back up. I could see the heater and the tube right there. Things are looking good. We're going to pick up the book and we're going to move to the next section. I'll further note that with the tube in and everything heated and running normally and I tap it, right, we see that the short lights remain illuminated, which is counterintuitive, but that's fine. As long as the lights don't go out, it means that there are no shorts. I see all five. That test passes. So next test after that one is quality test, and it, it doesn't use the micro modes. It's just good or bad, right? So I'm hitting it, and you can see it's just past the G in good, which doesn't tell me anything except for the fact that it's not bad. So we're, gonna, we're just going to leave it at that. It's my understanding that if the mutual conductance, as indicated in the book, falls within one of the three prescribed ranges and is above 500, right, you set the shunt to one of those markers. 
the marker here for 1250 would be zero to 3000. It's self-explanatory. And what I've done though, we can see in the video is I have set shunt exactly to that first dot for 3000. This is no longer a good or bad scale, but an actual indication of micro modes. I would expect on a fully calibrated system that this tube would return 1250. And as I hit the test button, what I actually see is this tester, believe it or not, is coming back with 1150. It's only off by 100 micromos, which is very impressive. And I want to record that uh, down here and because I, I just want to compare the other side because I'm about to go and look at the other section of this tube. I've set this test back up to evaluate the other side of this tube now, and it is back on good or bad test. So I'm going to hit the button and see what number I get, right? And we're seeing 1900. And again, I, I could have been slightly off. I mean, I did this sloppy. I'm not sitting directly in front of the unit. Just seeing under 1900. Last one was 1850. I'll just call this 1900. And now I'm going to set it up for the micro Mohs test. We're set up for micro Mohs. I'm going to hit the button. And we're seeing just above 1150, right? So we're seeing about 1200. So, yeah. So again, it could have been me with the line test slightly off, slightly higher or whatnot, giving, giving a wrong reading when I readjusted. To be sure I had left everything in place, adjusted absolutely nothing, but the controls that were required to move it from one to the other and did actually find the discrepancy was in fact in the tube. One is a little higher than the other. So we're going to conduct a gas test now and basically how this is done is we're going to hit the test button and once the test button finds its position we're going to hit the gas button and this turns into a basically a hundred milliamp uh, current meter right and we should have no more than two divisions or two milliamps and if we have more than that, then the tube is gassy. So let's just do the test now. We'll set the line voltage properly. We'll hit the test button. Then we'll hit the gas button. It's less than two divisions. We can see the tube is not gassy. Pass the test. Filament continuity checks for just that. Uh, the assumption is that if you have good filming continuity, this should only bump, but then come back to line test. If you have no filming continuity, it should drop to zero. So I hit it, and you can see it's back on line test. Everything is fine. No issues with the filming continuity, not that I expected it. So we're going to conduct what's called a tube life test. So with this setup, we're basically going to run the test and adjust the shunt in such that, with, with the tube we already know is good, right? You can't do this with a bad tube. But what we're going to do, we're going to adjust it so that the good falls on the 2000. So we hit test right now, and I've, I've adjusted it for a different setting, but I'm going to turn this so it goes to 2000 and not measures micro -mos. So now we can see I've actually adjusted the shunt to ensure that the test lands on 2000. The trick here is with that setup just like that, is to turn the filament voltage one back from whatever the filament voltage is supposed to be. In this case, from 12.6 down to 10. Now, if I hit test again, and it is anywhere north of line test, it means the tube is going to last a good long time. Yeah, this tube is going to last a good long time. And that's what the life test means. Even on that reduced filament voltage, it's still able to pass as good on this tube tester in that exact scenario. And that's how you measure the life test. Of course, when you're conducting that life test, you have to make sure that you're going to do it on both triodes if it's the kind of tube that you test more than one triode configuration, as is the case with the 12AX7. I just want to point that out because you could have one triode that still has um, strong enough life to operate at a lower filament voltage, but the other triode does not. And that's it. I think this is all the basic functions of this uh, Hickok 6000 tube tester. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.